Coming up, author June Smith discuss overcoming her childhood trauma in her book, Outside the Gate, and a near-death experience gives a soldier a purpose for his life. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. I'm so glad you joined me today. You know, there's a really big question we all ask. Is there purpose for my life? And sometimes when you face pain and suffering, you feel that God couldn't do anything with that. There's just no purpose to it. Well, I've got good news to you. Today, I've got a guest. Actually, she's a special friend of mine from when I was a little girl. And she has not only found greater purpose and joy in her life, but her story is going to impact you. Her book, Outside the Gate, is a true story of an orphan child separated from her brother and her mother at age four and forever lost to each other. And into the foster care system, she went where she experienced violence and cruelty. Well, that child is June Smith, and she's here to discuss her book today. June, welcome to 700 Club Canada. Thank you very much for having me. Well, right. I could not put down your book. <laughs> I, I, it caused me to cry, uh, it moved me. Uh, it's so well written. Uh, it also gave me laughter as you describe some of your life. But uh, your book, Outside the Gate, you share this incredible story as a young orphan girl. And you survived, as you say, the foster care system in Ontario mm -hmm. when there was tremendous abuse that occurred. Why did you write the book? I wanted to be a voice for people who did not have a voice. I wanted to share light on darkness and remove its power. I was brought to great healing in my life and I wanted to share that healing with other people who have suffered the way I have suffered and empower them to tell their story. Oh, that, well, you have done that. Anyone who reads your book, June, is going to feel that the light that comes overcomes the darkness. Well, you were separated from your brother, Freddie. It's a very touching part of your story. You're placed in the Salvation Army Orphanage in Toronto, which actually were some of your brighter years, and you experienced some safety and love there. But then you were put in the foster care system, and eventually the Grandview School for Girls, and there was abuse and cruelty. How did the violence and cruelty impact your life, June? I saw myself through the eyes of my abusers. And so I had tremendous self-loathing. I thought there was something terribly wrong with me. Separation from my family created a void. And I tried to fill that deep void with alcohol, prescription drugs, and inappropriate relations with other men. And this only increased my shame and brought me close to suicide many times. As a young mom, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And the symptoms of that disease played itself out in my life with deep, fathomless depression rendering me almost uh, dysfunctional, uh, not being able to get out of my bed often and not able to care for myself and for the people that I love very deeply. In the church, I always felt different. Everybody else seemed so together. And I thought I tried so hard to be like them, but I couldn't measure up. So this is what the trauma did for me. Well, you know, you said the word shame. And as I read your story, I understand. I, I can't imagine some of the situations that you were in. And at one point you ran away, but the foster care worker really didn't represent you accurately. Mm -hmm. How did it feel at the time as a young girl, you're trying to escape this abuse, but you're not represented. You didn't have a voice in that situation, did you? No. Yes, in those days when uh, you stood before the court, even as a young teenager, we didn't have an advocate. Um, so it was a very, uh, a time of deep, fear 
and terrified at the people that were looking after me because my very, the people that were to look after me uh, were hurting me. And so uh, you're never feeling safe ever. One part of your story that struck me when you, you tried to run away and get away from this unsafe environment and a police officer showed you kindness and, you know, there was inter, there was interventions of God in your life, right? Exactly. At oh, different so times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what is your take on that is even as you were at the girls mm-hmm. school and there was a, you know, a lot of unhealthy abuse going on. Where was God's presence there? It is uh, always the grace of God was like, as I say, gold strands amongst the dark fabric of my life. Like the policeman that you mentioned that appeared to a young, lonely girl in Toronto. I was 16 years of age when he walked me home that night. And I had many graces that I share in my book of beautiful things that happened to me during all the course. I made friendships in the school and also was able to win a public speaking contest and talk about my house of tomorrow that God had built, my dream house. And so there were many things that happened to keep me. uh, Jesus Christ was always there. I may not have been aware of it, but he was there. You are so right. And that comes out in your book so clearly. What would you say to people? I mean, there are, your story is not unlike the Indigenous children who Mm -hmm. suffered in schools across our nation. Um, You never found your brother again. What would you say to those who have been impacted by such suffering? Well, first of all, my heart aches for anyone that has had their family torn away from them and then to suffer abuse from the people that are supposed to be taking care of you. So I can only share that all through the years as I searched for my brother, and I never found Freddie, and we never understood because he wrote a letter when he was 18 years old asking to see me, and the Children's Aid Society said no. So I have never been able to find my own brother. What I would say to anyone that has suffered that much is share your story, open yourself up, and keep telling your story so that people that have gone through what you've gone through will find hope and also encourage them to tell their story. Well, you have done it so well in this book. June shares so powerfully the key to healing and how she's been experienced the love of God. I can't thank you enough, June, for sharing this story. Uh, if you want to more know more about June and how to get her book, go to 700club.ca and you'll find all the information there. Thank you so much, June. God bless you. Thank you very much. Well, after the break, you'll see how Colin found a future in the same place where his life nearly ended. In whatever circumstance you face, God wants you to have victory. It's not too late. Believe that God wants to do a miracle in your life. And if you need to talk with someone who understands, all you have to do is call us at 1-855-759-0700. A prayer partner is waiting to listen and pray with you today. coming in. Every light in the gym was off. There was yelling and nobody was mad at I felt something dripping. My right leg was throbbing. My hand in front of my face. I'm hit. May 3rd, 2012. Taliban forces launched rockets at the Patika Province Army Base in Afghanistan. In the blast zone was 22-year-old Staff Sergeant Colin Wayne. You'd hear it. Womp, womp, womp. Incoming, incoming, incoming and a 107 millimeter rocket impacted about three and a half feet from me. Colin had joined the army when he was only 17 years old and was on his third combat tour. Now, the gym he had been working out in moments earlier was blown up, leaving the soldier wounded inside. Medics quickly dragged him out and a Black Hawk helicopter airlifted him to a larger base for triage. 
shrapnel all the way through my right leg, tinnitus in my left ear, nerve damage L1 through L3 in my back, treated for traumatic brain injury, shrapnel that penetrated both arms. My oxygen levels started depleting pretty bad. And so that was kind of a panic moment. Further examination showed no internal bleeding and Colin's oxygen levels soon stabilized. Yet the decorated serviceman still had a long road of recovery ahead. It was pretty intensive. Um, I had to go through therapy for my leg just to move the tendons, kind of relearn to walk. I had to have lumbar block fusion surgery for my back, but I started to realize that, you know, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna figure it out, just like I've always done. For nearly seven months, Colin worked tirelessly to strengthen his body. When he got out of the Army in early 2013, not only had he recovered, but he was in peak physical condition and even had his sights set on a new career path, fitness modeling. It's funny because the gym almost killed me, but it also saved my life and turned it into a career. What most people would say is a tremendous setback ended up being a set up for my future. 15 months after my near-death experience, in Afghanistan, I was on the cover of Iron Man magazine. Colin became an early social media fitness influencer, and his popularity soared. Top magazines from around the world featured him, all the while the veteran refused to charge publication and talent fees. Instead, he focused on growing his brand and adding value to his community. I believe wholeheartedly that when you give without the expectation of a return, it always comes back times 10. And like God will always provide for what you're doing for humanity. And within a two and a half year period, I landed 50 plus magazine covers and grew my social media following to over 4 million followers. In 2016, Colin pursued yet another dream in founding Redline Steel. The company, specializing in custom wall decor, has seen immense success with over $100 million in sales. Yet despite the profit, the business holds tight to charity at its core. My statement is people over profit. I believe in that wholeheartedly. And it's not because of me. I, I, I blame it as good upbringing, culture of the military teaching me the core values that's needed, and then God. We've been able to give five million plus dollars to charities and nonprofits, and really be a hands extended, not just in our community, but across the nation, working with incredible nonprofits. Many of which directly support veterans and their families. It's that same drive to serve that first led him to the military. Now, Colin continues to serve his community and veterans as he reflects on his own life journey. I could have died on my base, and I should have. So to use my business for other veterans on, on an outreach standpoint, it's bigger than me. Well, you would think after what Colin suffered, he would have given up on any hope for the future, right? But he took the opposite approach. His suffering, his near-death experience led him to his purpose. It's amazing. You know, when your purpose is always greater than yourself, uh, when you live life for something larger than yourself, you can be assured that God is in it. See, too often we build our lives around trying to gain for maybe our own benefit or our own sense of accomplishment. But scripture tells us that we're here to build our lives by giving up our lives for others. Uh, Matthew 16 verses 24 and 25 says this, then Jesus said uh, to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. So this word, take up your cross, wow, like that just sounds like beyond anyone's ability. Well, it is actually. It, it actually means to take up your suffering. See, your suffering can be leveraged for God's purposes. You know, when you live for a greater purpose in yourself, God loves that. And that's when he takes our suffering and our pain and he actually makes it our message. Uh, there's a little phrase, our mess becomes our message. And I know that that's true in my own life. We've already seen that today with June's story, how your story, your difficulty, your pain can become the greatest 
hope telling story for other people. We have a resource called The Sky's the Limit, How to Succeed God's Way. So why don't you call us 1-855-759-0700. It's free. We're also here to pray for you and with you. Well, after the break, an organization working to change the world, one church building at a time. Watch their story. Dennis Allen is the CEO of International Cooperating Ministries, an organization working to change the world, one church building at a time. We, I think, always felt that the Church of Jesus Christ is God's own plan for distributing the gospel. ICM's mission is to help congregations around the world learn God's word and build their own churches. We are partnering with indigenous groups that are already doing this type of ministry, but they lack the facilities and the resources to really be able to do it adequately. Janice's father, Doyce Rosser, is the founder of ICM. He first got the idea at a time when most people are thinking about retirement. At the age of 65, my father had been very, very successful in the business world. In the business world, you look to maximize. We ran, I think, 27 different franchises at one time. But what you do is look for ways to get it done. Well, if we do that in the business world, why shouldn't we do it in the kingdom? With that, Rosser started working to make a radio broadcast series called Mini Bible College, available to people around the world. The in-depth study written by Pastor Dick Woodward had revived Rosser's own faith, and he wanted to share its message. Later, when he visited some of those countries, he saw another very basic need, church buildings. And the best example of that is that there are 600,000 villages in India, 650 million people, that's twice the population of the United States, live in those villages. You can't send enough missionaries. You can't afford to send them up from all the various denominations. You've got to equip the nationals. So what happened, we, when we built a church in a village, we could change the whole village. Then, using his own money, Rosser founded ICM. For the next 30 years, the organization would provide local congregations the needed funds to build a church in some of the world's darkest areas. For example, when you think of Central America, 50% of the population may be under the age of 21 where you have some of the highest murder rates on the entire planet. The drugs and the violence and the teen pregnancy and the prostitution, that cycle is going to be perpetuated until the gospel of Jesus Christ steps in and changes people's hearts and gives them a different future, gives them a different hope. Janice says that the church is often the only proper building in the community. When these villagers and these rural congregations have a building. They're using the buildings for schools. They're using the buildings for medical clinics. And many times they will put the only clean water well at the place of the church. Some of the churches serve people in desperate need of refuge. We began hearing stories of how the churches were becoming the safe havens for these people escaping the atrocities um, that were going on as, as they were fleeing their own countries. Building the body of Christ hasn't come without persecution and violence. This photo was brought into my office. I saw two railroad tracks, and on one side was a human head, and the other side was the body. And it was a 13-year-old boy who was the son of a pastor of an ICM church and the extremists kidnapped him and beheaded him as a way to um, 
force his father to stop preaching the gospel. And he said, we will not stop being Christ's presence here in this village, no matter what. To date, ICM and its donors have funded nearly 6,500 churches in more than 80 countries and had the Mini Bible College translated into over 40 languages, and there's still more work to be done. Well, the first thing you realize is that man can't handle it. But what do you expect? If you read the history books, man has not been able to solve the problems of the world. God is the answer. My father's obedience when God just said, Dois, just bring to me what your time and talents and abilities are, and I will do something with it. And he says that to each and every one of us. That's our opportunity we have to serve the King of Kings. Have you ever met someone and thought, I wish that I was as bold and courageous as them? Being bold in life can be hard. It takes risk. It means putting yourself out there for others to potentially witness your faults and failures. It can be intimidating or can leave us questioning the decisions that we made. Yet, we see in the Bible that we are to live bold lives, ones that walk with strength and courage. Joshua 1 verse 9 tells us, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever we go. And in Acts 28 verse 31, it says, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Boldness is a trait that we can grow and develop in our life. Boldness is defined as taking risk or being confident in something or someone. When we see boldness in the Bible, we're talking about the confidence that we have in Jesus. That even when life is hard or unpredictable, we can live boldly confident, knowing Jesus walks with us and never leaves us. As we follow Jesus, here are three things that we can build up in our life to live with boldness. The first one is humility. Yes, it may sound like an oxymoron that to be bold requires us to be humble. But being bold means that we need to have a clear and confident perspective on our decisions and directions. And sometimes that means letting go of control or our need to fix everything so that we can understand where God is leading us in that moment. Secondly, endurance. Being bold isn't easy. It's going to require us to persevere and to endure through some difficult seasons or moments in life. The definition of endurance is the fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. To be bold is likely going to require us to push through difficult situations. But in the end, we know our endurance produces us hope, which is our confidence in Jesus. And lastly, influence. Boldness involves others. We are not just bold for ourselves, but we make bold moves and choices in life in hopes that we will inspire and empower others to live with boldness. When we do, we inspire them to live their best life. Boldness begins with a posture of humility so that our confidence is first found in Jesus. Bold living requires a building up of our endurance and a pushing through difficult situations without giving way. And this produces our hope or confidence in Jesus and influences those around us to also live boldly. Someone should download the CBN Family app to get an easy view at all of CBN's media. Having access easily to that faith-based content is so invaluable. This is a great way I could take that with me on the go, you know? This app is really easy to use. My favorite feature is the fact that you can look at like the different like feeds, like the news, animations. This app has exactly what you're looking for as far as Christian values go.
Well, 700 Club Candy, we want to resource you. And the CBN Family app is a great resource. It has something for all ages. So I encourage you to download that and enjoy that. Uh, you can also watch our show from that app as well. And if you become a monthly partner with us, which we enables all of our resources to uh, become available to others, start at $20 a month or more. Be such an encouragement to us. And as a thank you gift, you'll receive a latest teaching from Gordon Robertson, Divine Direction. It comes with a 21-day devotional and it will help you discover God's will for your life. So why don't you give us a call today, um, 1-855-759-0700. You'll also get our Frontline monthly newsletter when you become a monthly partner. So call us and join us today. Where did I come from? Who am I? Where am I going? These questions determine the course of your life. CBN presents Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future. In this original audio teaching, Gordon Robertson tackles these vital questions. And the answers can remake your image of yourself. Start your new year with an encouraging message about God's plan for you. Well, if you've been asking the question, is there a purpose for my life, even a purpose out of my pain? I heard, hope you heard loud and clear today. Yes, yes, yes. You heard it in June's story. I mean, every story we share here on the 700 Club Canada is because God is using someone's story to help other people know there's purpose and then God can do beautiful things through your story, no matter what. Uh, is in your story, the good, the bad, and the ugly. God loves to use it all. And I want to thank you for encouraging us. Uh, it's great to know, to hear from our partners and to know how you uh, feel about the program and the ministry. So surely you said, my husband and I enjoy the amazing testimonies and seeing how our Savior brought hope and restoration to so many who struggle with challenges. Well, I have to agree with you. That really comes through in every story and interview, doesn't it, Shirley? It's just to see how God works through challenges and pain and restores people's lives. That's why we do what we do, to share stories of hope to help others. And Linda, thanks for your comment. You said thank you for your faithful devotion to sharing God's love and light to all of Canada and for your fervent prayers of comfort and encouragement. I love you guys. God bless you in Jesus' name. Well, we love you too. Uh, I'll speak on behalf of Bill, who isn't here with me today, but uh, thank you for, for just sending us that encouragement. It means so much to us. And uh, share uh, either through social media you can share through our YouTube channel, through Facebook and Instagram. You can share testimonies. You can share the whole show. You can watch it on our YouTube channel. Share it with others. Well, 1 John 2, 17 says, The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Well, that's a good word. Thanks for watching today, and we love you. The 700 Club Canada has committed to partner with Samaritan's Purse Canada as they respond to the earthquake in Turkey, including the deployment of emergency relief supplies, an emergency field hospital, and disaster relief personnel. Call us at 1-855-759-0700 or go to our website, 700club.ca, to donate. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada, a man travels to Alaska and finds God waiting for him there. And a young woman learns what love is after years of struggle without it.